In this issue of ICC in Focus, we talk to Fatou Ben Souda, the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court. The prosecutor decides on opening investigations, investigates, and prosecutes those charged with crimes under the court's jurisdiction. Kenya is one out of eight situations where crimes committed have been investigated by your office. Could you tell us how the Kenyan situation is similar or different from the seven other situations? There are different ways my office can initiate an investigation in any particular situation. Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Central African Republic and Mali all referred the situations in their countries to the office of the prosecutor. The situations in Darfur, Sudan and Libya where the court had no jurisdiction because they have not ratified the statute, were referred by the United Nations Security Council to ensure justice for the victims of crimes allegedly committed on those territories. Cote d'Ivoire, even though at the time not a state party to the Rome Statute, accepted jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court and requested the court's intervention. Kenya is the first case where an investigation was opened on the basis of the prosecutor's own proprio motu powers, authorized by the judges of the ICC. The prosecutor intervened following consultation with Kenyan leaders, an agreement that impunity was not an option following the post-election violence. In all these cases, the office is investigating and prosecuting alleged crimes under the jurisdiction of the court, genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. Could you remind us how Kenyan post-election violence came to be investigated by the ICC? The preamble of the Rome Statute states that the primary responsibility for the investigation and prosecution of the most serious crimes of international concerns lies with states. The ICC only intervenes in a situation when a state is unable or unwilling to genuinely investigate or prosecute the alleged crimes. Despite several attempts in 2009, Kenya's parliament did not manage to pass the legislation required to establish a special tribunal. Since then, the government of Kenya has not demonstrated to the judges of the ICC that it is actually investigating or prosecuting the free accused for the conduct that is the subject matter of their cases at the ICC. The judicial process is now in motion at the ICC. Justice must run its course. Some witnesses initially called by the office of the prosecutor were dismissed. Some have decided not to testify, while others were found to be giving false testimony. How is the office planning to overcome such challenges? First of all, many of these witnesses have gone to great lengths to risk their lives and the lives of their relatives to support our investigations and prosecutions. These are people of immense moral courage who want to see justice done in Kenya. Efforts to find out who witnesses are have continued unabated as the trial dates draw closer. Relatives of witnesses have been approached to disclose the whereabouts of witnesses or those perceived to be our witnesses. Incentives, including bribes, have been offered, and in some cases, threats and intimidations have been used to solicit information about our witnesses. The security and safety of witnesses is a priority for us, and this explains our request to the Chamber for delayed disclosure until the Witness Protection Unit has taken adequate protection measures, including removing the witnesses from Kenya. There are allegations that some of the prosecution's witnesses have been intimidated. Is your office planning to take action against those that may be responsible for such threats? Those who tamper with witnesses are very discreet and go to great lengths to hide their identities. We are monitoring the situation closely and continuing to gather as much information as possible related to incidents involving our witnesses and the pressures 
our witnesses are encountering. We will take action based on the evidence.